Every year, thousands of human remains are found in the United States. And in one of every four instances, authorities can't identify the body. That's starting to change. I'm Dave Killen, co-host of The Unidentifieds, a new limited series podcast from The Oregonian and Oregon Live. We go deep into several cold cases and explain the science that's helping experts give these long-forgotten people their names back. Look for The Unidentifieds after you've finished listening to this podcast. Subscribe to The Unidentifieds on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by The Oregonian and Oregon Live dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we are headed out back to the coast to talk about the unique lodging experience at Pacific City. That's right, Vicki. We've talked about a few different unique stays here on the podcast from tiny cabins to yurts, what have you. There's a, a quite a few options for places that aren't quite camping, but not also hotels either. Exactly. And whether you want to call it glamping or whatever you want, uh, there are so many options for these unique stays in the region. And I think it's perfect for these rainy spring days, which is exactly what I was looking for last month. Um, So kind of in the midst of those nonstop rainy days, I headed out to Pacific City and I stayed at Hearts Camp Airstream Hotel. Okay, so Airstream Hotel, I'm imagining, tell me if this is what I I think it is. It's like these places that have a bunch of like vintage Airstream trailers you can stay in? Yeah. So there are a couple that are vintage. Um, and if you look on the website, there's a breakdown. They have seven different Airstreams. And I believe two of them are actually from the 70s. The rest are, I think, from like 2015, 2016 uh, times. And um, basically... It works like a hotel, so you can book whatever days you're wanting to stay. I think on weekends, it's like a two-day minimum stay. Um, But these Airstreams are located kind of right one after another, um, outdoors, obviously. (laughs) And uh, at these Airstreams, you basically get a little outdoor area, a little patio. Um, You get a fire ring with some Adirondack chairs. There's an outdoor shower. And then on the inside, um, most of them host up to two people and two pets. And, um, you know, if you've been in an Airstream before, you know what to expect. You have like a bed, a very cozy kitchen, a little dining area, and then uh, I'll say this in quotes, a full bathroom, <laughs> even though it's very tiny. <laughs> so you have all the kind of amenities of a hotel, but you also get this kind of camping mm. action as well. It sounds very charming. So you said this is in Pacific City, but where, where exactly are we talking about? So this is in Pacific City, and it is basically right across the street from Pelican Brewing. Um, And if you look on a map, you'll see Cape Kawanda RV Park, which I think is by the same owners as Hearts Camp, this Airstream Hotel. Um, And so one of the best parts about staying at this Airstream Hotel is that you you walk a few steps, walk across the street, and you're right there at Pacific City Beach. Great location, especially now that that, I mean, that the parking lot gets so crowded, um, you know, Pelican gets so crowded. Mm-hmm. It's got to be so nice just to walk across the street and not worry about trying to find a parking spot or finding other people for it. That's, that sounds like a really great opportunity. Yes, exactly. Um, and because most of these Airstreams are dog friendly, I wanted to take Stella along with me. So she came along yes. and it was really great to be able to just stay, like park your car, you get a little parking pad outside of the Airstream and then you walk right on over, brought Stella with me. She was with me for every activity of this trip (laughs) and it was super convenient to go like run out with her on the beach get get all of her crazy energy out and um even though at the beginning I was saying it was rainy basically 
all the days leading up to this trip, we actually ended up getting really lucky and having a nice, sunny, beautiful day at the beach. Oh, that's so amazing. When you were talking about those amenities, about the firing, the, out, the outside seating area, the outdoor shower, I was like, man, are you going to be able to enjoy mm-hmm. like any of the amenities that they have there? <laughs> Yeah, we got really lucky with uh, with going on a, a randomly beautiful day um, with very little clouds in the sky at all. And uh, we took advantage of all the outdoor stuff, um, of course, walked on the beach, but then also enjoyed that patio area that's outside of the Airstream. So when you get there, they do supply basically everything for getting a fire ready to go from um, a few different logs and then like a fire starting kit. And then they also get give you a s'mores kit which is awesome (laughs) and such a nice little perk um so at night i built a fire made some s'mores and just sat out and it was a little chilly out but they even gave you a blanket too to sit by the fire so really really nice so they're like really bringing the amenities here was there anything else that they offered um so inside they also had uh, a little coffee maker i think it was like a chemex and some fresh coffee for you. And then they had in, in the uh, fridge, they gave you um, complimentary hop water, which I had oh, never had, but it yes. was from Pelican Brewing. It was so good. Yeah. The sparkle hops? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. I w- did not know what to expect, but when I read it, I was like, is this going to be gross? But it was delicious. <laughs> I, I swear by that. So I, I love it because, you know, as someone who I, I love the taste of, of like an IPA and of like really hoppy beers, but I don't like like beer. It doesn't sit well in my body. So having something that does not so fermented, it's not, doesn't have all the alcohol, but still gives that hop taste. It's really nice to have. Yeah. I'm not much of a drinker. And when I saw some like non-alcoholic sparkly beverage, I immediately got excited and got to enjoy that out on one of the Adirondack chairs that they have uh, outside of the Airstream. And it was lovely. Wow, amazing! So you said that these these airstreams can hold up to two people, um, but there's a number of them. Or is this the kind of place where you can bring a, a large group, or is this sort of more like a two person at a time situation? Yeah, so most of them are max of two people, max of two pets. There is one option out of the seven that has different um, bunk beds for twin bunk beds. So there's one option for a little bit bigger of a group. But then they also encourage if you are going with friends, you can get like two Airstreams that are next to each other. And apparently you can open up like the fencing in between them. And then you're set for a whole Airstream party. (laughs) (laughs) That's a nice way to do it, but it, it sounds like generally speaking, this is aimed more at like couples or pairs of people than it is with say like larger families. Totally. Um, I felt pretty cozy in there just with me and Stella. So I can't imagine, <laughs> you know, I could imagine going with my partner and his small dog, but it would get a little, little cramped. Uh, but luckily you have that outdoor area where you can kind of mosey in between the airstream and the patio well one thing we haven't talked about is is the price tag so i mean obviously camping is like people like to do it in large part because it's so affordable um what does it look like here how much did you pay for your your airstream experience lucky enough and we talk about this quite a bit on this podcast i went on a weekday Mm -hmm. granted it was spring break so there are actually a lot of people in and around the area but i went on a weekday and you can only stay for one night if you do a week night if you go on the weekend you have to do a two night minimum um so it ended up being after the the like 20 25 dog fee it ended up being right at like 300 dollars so I would say, you know, this is more of a special experience. This is not exactly the most budget-friendly option, but with all the amenities that they have and the proximity to walking to the beach and everything, I thought it was it was a pretty good it was a great experience in my honest opinion. And uh if you're looking for something that's really special, it might be worth spending that $300. Well, there's something that's romantic, too, about staying in an Airstream trailer. I know a lot of people really like that sort of thing. So, I mean, I know you you mentioned it was kind of cramped or um, but it was also kind of like this magical place. But what was your experience of being in this 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 vintage trailer? 
I thought it was super cute. And I actually had never been in an Airstream before, so I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but it's kind of crazy how efficient they are in using that tiny little space and making use out of every inch in that thing. Um, you know, from just a smaller sink to including pullouts in a lot of the drawers to make more storage, uh, storage overhead of the bed and um, under the bed as well. And <laughs> the, the bathroom was tiny. So like if you're sitting on the toilet, I won't get too much into the deep, not TMI here, but like <laughs> to use the toilet paper, you open up a cabinet while you're like sitting there because there's so little space even for just like a toilet paper roll. Uh, so, and like the shower was tiny too. And stepping in that, like if you're claustrophobic might not be the best choice, but uh, I just thought it was super, super cute and I know there are a lot of people that are really into Airstreams and kind of like follow this type of thing. So if you're into the glamping type of stuff, I would highly recommend. Yeah. And there's certainly lots of folks who do that. Um, you know, I feel like these, these kinds of places, these vintage trailer resorts, um, I feel like I always see people, um, filling them up. I feel like every time I've been driving by or that I've stayed in one, it's been a pretty popular experience were there a bunch of folks there i know it was spring break like you said yeah the the park itself because it is owned by the same people who own the rv park um it surprisingly was not that crowded or maybe there are just so many different spots there within the the grounds that people were spread out but i kind of felt like it was just our own little deal. Uh, I think there were neighbors in one other Airstream, if I remember correctly, but it felt very private and there's fencing in between the the Airstreams. So it really does feel like your own area all to yourself. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I would assume that on the weekends, it would probably be significantly more crowded. I imagine in the summertime too. I mean, you, you lucked out with some good weather, but you, typically speaking, that time of year on the coast yeah. is uh, not a time when you can enjoy all the amenities that they offer. Um, so of course, with the great weather, you mentioned going out to the beach, walking across the street. Um, but uh, what else did you get up to out there in Pacific City? So I hadn't been to Pacific City before. Uh, so just spent some time walking along the beach at Pacific City Beach. Um, and that was that was where all the people really were because it was such a nice day. Maybe everyone had left their Airstreams and was just enjoying <laughs> the nice weather on the beach. Um, but we also spent some time walking around Cape Coanda State Natural Area. Um, there Because it was spring break, there were a ton of kids Um if you're familiar with Pacific City Beach, and uh, you can see that there is this giant hill of sand that kids love to run down mm -hmm. at full speed <laughs> slash just like roll and tumble down. <laughs> so at first glance, I was like, oh my God, there's like a kid rolling down this cliff. Like someone save him. <laughs> no injuries there. They were all fine. But uh we walked around there and got to the top and just like great sweeping views and uh, watching the sunset along that area and the waves crashing was so, so beautiful. And it's interesting because I feel like that um, that area there, Cape Kawanda, the way that the sand is set up, it almost reminds me of something out of like Southern California mm. um, because of all the sandy cliffs and everything. It definitely reminds me of like La Jolla. Um, in San Diego. Uh, and I think because the sun was just like shining and so bright, that's the first thing that came to mind. Um, but after we walked around um, at Cape Coanda, we went back down to the beach, sat on a log, watched people go by. Stella was just chilling with me the whole time. Um, and we watched the sunset and that is like ingrained in my memory now. It was so beautiful. Amazing. Ah. Well, Cape Kiwanda's, I think, is one of those really special spots. I mean, it, it's crowded for a good reason. It's so beautiful to, like you said, climb up that sandy hill to to walk out um, mm -hmm. on those cliffs and look at the ocean. Um, obviously not the only place to go to out there. Did you go to any other outdoor spots while you were in the area? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the first day we did Cape Kiwanda, and then the next morning 
we went to Sitka Sedge, Ugh. which was something that I heard you talk about on the podcast quite a bit. So yeah. I really wanted to go out there <laughs> and it did not let me down. Um, beautiful new trails there. It was just so peaceful. I like that at the beginning you start out walking kind of like in this marshy area and then, uh, you know, going through the forest canopy you get your lovely moss action and then you can go right from the trail onto the beach, which was really cool. And yeah, something, something really nice about a kind of like a brand new trail. You're like, Oh, this is so nice. (laughs) And different than, than what you're often seeing on the Oregon coast, not just like driving to a parking lot and walk crossing the dunes onto the beach. It's really the opportunity to sort of hike through the environment ecosystem to pop out to the beach you get a better sense of what that environment looks like totally totally and we we did probably every last inch of that trail um (laughs) and because there's a few different like loops you can kind of take and make it your own adventure but we did about like you know four four and a half miles um which was it was nice because the cape kawanda area it's like you walk a little bit and then you're pretty much done but this felt like more of a a longer hike which was really nice and Stella really enjoyed it Stella was watching the birds Stella's a bird watcher <laughs> oh I bet <laughs> those birds are watching her too I bet. <laughs> yeah seriously uh and then aside from that we stopped at McPhillips Beach um which is kind of like this tiny smaller beach have you been there before Jamie I don't think so and I I feel like I've I've been to every beach but where is this one this one is right, it's kind of in between Pacific City Beach and uh, Sitka Sedge. It's just it's a little bit north of uh, Pacific City Beach. Um, but it's this tiny little pull-off, and um, we had the whole beach to ourselves, which was really nice. So I let Stella run around and play fetch, and it was a little bit more cloudy, so it felt nice to just kind of like walk and ponder and have my thoughts to myself. That's what's so nice about the beach too, right? And and something about just being out there, especially when it, the air is so cool and crisp in the wintertime. Um, gosh, I just, I love, I'm, I'm just, you know, reminding, reminded of, of being out there and, and hearing you speak about it is uh, flooding me with memories of, of those great times. Um, <laughs> so nice. So you went to McPhillips Beach. Um, you got some nice beach time. Um, what else did you just have? Is that your last day in town? Did you do anything else? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like 24 hours in Pacific City, (laughs) so uh, it was a quick trip, but uh, I definitely really enjoyed my stay and, uh, you know, got to explore a few of the restaurants in town, Um, got some really good Mexican food, which is now like my go-to thing when I go to the coast, (laughs) is going and trying a new Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Los Caporales. Yeah. if you like enchiladas, this is the place to go. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> Amazing. And then in the morning, hit up Grateful Bread oh, Bakery, yeah. which is indeed a play on Grateful Dead. And they do have lots of Grateful Dead like merch in and around the <laughs> store, in and around the bakery. Great name, great bakery. I haven't been there in years, but that's like a mainstay in Pacific City. I feel like that's been around forever. Yeah, yeah. And it was definitely very well known because during spring break and when I went that morning, it was packed. There was (laughs) a wait. Uh, (laughs) I I completely blanked on it being spring break. And I was like, oh, my gosh, these kids not go to school. What are they doing here? (laughs) I'm out of touch. So I know it was your first time in Pacific City. What was your general feel of the place? What, what did you What did you think about it? You know, I feel like whenever I go to a new town on the coast, because my first experiences of like going to the coast obviously are Cannon Beach, I'm always surprised at like, oh, it's just like a tiny little, it's a tiny, <laughs> tiny little town. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I really didn't know what to expect, and uh, I thought it was. It was just super nice and quaint, and uh, even though it was spring break, like traffic and whatnot was not overwhelming or anything like that. So um, I really liked it. Well, obviously a, a great spot to spend a day. Anything that I missed, Jamie? Uh, any favorites that you have for Pacific City? 
Well, I mean, you know, you, you hit up obviously a, a lot of really good spots. Um, you know, Pelican Brewing, as we mentioned, I think is probably one of the most popular restaurants in town, um, if not one of the most popular restaurants on the coast. I mean, it's it's got incredible view right there on the beach. Um, of course, good beer, um, good food, usually jam packed. So uh, I, I often don't even try to get into Pelican. Um, but it's got some nice overflow restaurants. I feel like every time I'm there, you go to you go to Cape Kiwanda, you try to get something at Pelican, and then you end up at like the burgers and taco place next door uh, across the park. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I've I've done that a couple times before. Um, that's that's a pretty a pretty reliable um, trick there. Um, but I mean, you, you can always go down to Bob Straub State Park. That's just sort of the southern end of Cape Kiwanda Beach. Um, you know, you can just walk that whole beach if you want all the way, um, to the mouth of the Nestucca Bay and Nestucca Bay is a good place to go kayaking, um, as with like a lot of wildlife refuges that are kind of on the coast there and, um, going north from there, obviously there, there's just a lot of great stuff, um, going up to Cape Lookout and, um, going up to Neatarts, um, and Cape Mears, there's that sort of that three capes section of the coast. That's a really nice day trip as well. So I mean, it's a great place to anchor yourself. I've done that before on some family vacations, just anchored in Pacific City and spent the days either on the beach or driving up and down um, 101 right there. And it's it's a really, really nice place to be, I think. So, yeah, if you are going on a weekend to uh, this Airstream Hotel, so you're there for multiple days, I don't think you will run out of things to do or explore or eat at all. <laughs> It doesn't sound like it. Well, Vicky, remind us one more time about what this uh, Airstream Hotel is called and how can folks find out more information or make a reservation? So this is Hearts Camp Airstream Hotel located in Pacific City. And you can go to heartscamp.com. That's H-A-R-T-S camp. Dot com and you can make your reservations online you can check out they have descriptions and pictures of each of the seven airstreams uh see what suits you best and go from there very cool well vicky any last words of wisdom or tips for anyone who wants to go out and uh, do a trip like you did well specifically for this airstream hotel uh they also advertise that there are wild rabbits or wild bunnies that <laughs> run around <laughs> and i saw a few of them uh and <laughs> for some reason you know i saw the pictures and i was like oh there's like some little bunny sanctuary where they all hang out but they're just like <laughs> randomly hopping around so if you see bunnies when you go and visit don't be alarmed or maybe like <laughs> be on guard if you have a dog because stella was <laughs> definitely staring them down uh but if you love bunny rabbits, then that's another thing to draw you there. <laughs> Airstreams, bunny rabbits, beaches, bread, all kinds of stuff in Pacific City. Absolutely. Well, Vicki, thank you so much for, for sharing it. I'm, I'm psyched to uh, go and check it out myself one of these days. But folks, in, until next time, you can watch all of our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel as well as hereisoregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at oregonlive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you are interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.